from a priori for a session on from the era of uncertainty and inflation to transformation. But firstly, just a quick introduction about myself. My name is Torben Pilsson, and I'm the Alliance Manager for BTC in the Nordics. And we are running all these webinars on Fridays every week, same time. But we also invite customers and partners for some inspiration on digital transformation to see what is possible and how to make things happen. And all the past webinars have also been recorded and are to be found on the registration site. And the agenda for today is first a quick overview of BTC by myself, and then Philip will run the show by introducing himself, touch base on a few challenges, how to address these, and then explain some of the business outcomes. And at the end, we are having a Q&A session. So please keep your questions to the end, or you may also put them in the chat, and we will pick them up later. Now, I will over to the next slide, Philip. So, P2C is a global software company with a headquarter in Boston, and we provide market-leading solutions on IoT, augmented reality, PLM, SLM, ALM, and CAD through the digital thread to help companies to accelerate their digital transformation. Now, over to you, Philip. Thank you very much, Job Jon. So, uh, good morning, uh, probably beginning of afternoon for uh, for some of you. Uh, my name is Philippe Dam. I'm uh, the Chief Marketing Officer at A Priori. And, um, you know, thank you very much for having us uh, today, uh, Tobion. Uh, you probably heard that uh, during the month of May, we signed a uh, partnership with BTC and um, we thought that potentially you would, uh, you would be interested to know, you know, why we're partnering and, and what we can do together. So before uh, we jump into the topic, uh, maybe a few words uh, about a priori. So uh, a priori is a software solution provider. We're uh, based in uh, Concord, so uh, Massachusetts, not too far from uh, where PTC is in Boston. Uh, so uh, so it's really near Boston. And uh, why do we exist? It's uh, it, it, it's really to help and support manufacturers to uh, what we call unlock and uh, identify new opportunities to uh, rapidly grow so you know that innovation is is always you know a uh, a major topic for manufacturers and so uh, how can they grow what type of uh, new design they can do and, and and those kind of things helping them to grow helping them also to uh, be more profitable how they can optimize their product cost and uh, and now uh, also helping them to address this uh, raising topic and and more and more complex topic called sustainability and we'll come to uh, we'll come to that in a minute and so uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers did already invest in technologies, as you all know, and um, we're just complementing those, uh, those technologies. Uh, digital Thread, for example, has, uh, has been a massive investment for company, we continue to be, but you know, we add and we accelerate the deployment of uh, digital transformation, digital thread strategies uh, to help company to become more agile and also uh, minimize their risk. So our topic is really around, you know, what, what we help company to achieve is really uh, three things. Uh, we help them to be more profitable, but, you know, looking at, you know, the product uh, cost and, uh, and carbon footprint. We also help them to optimize the manufacturability of those products, which, you know, reduce the time to market, can also reduce the weight of the product. And of course, sustainability, as I said, you can see a few of our customers on the right side of the slide. Caterpillar is one, Danfoss. Uh, we can name also a few in, uh, in, in the Nordic region like Vestas. Uh, Alstom, a French company, uh, is also a customer and you know many more like Toyota, Boeing, or even Carrier. So you may say, why, you know, why do we exist and, and what do we try really to, to do with, uh, you know, with our customers? Well, you know, when, when we, work with a customer usually the customer is facing a few a few specific challenges right and uh, and what we see is that all those challenges coming at the same time so the first one and nobody can can ignore it right uh inflation and uh, and margin pressure is still uh part of the a major topic there is a recent um study from mckinsey that is uh highlighting the fact that inflation remain the top you know priority and topic for ceo in manufacturing companies and the second one is uh geopolitical instability and so uh that remains here forcing company to really continue to 
really take an eye on you know their product cost, their product profitability, and making sure that they optimize uh, uh, you know their cost, but also their their product, right? Uh, second thing is you know the supply chain um, risks that uh, is still existing. It has uh, it has been a major topic during COVID, but it still exists in most of companies due to those geopolitical instabilities, and so. Uh, when we talk about you know supply chain risk is making sure that when a, when a customer are receive orders they are able to manufacture all the different parts they need in order to deliver the product and really generate cash at the end and satisfy the customer the third one that is also uh, existing for quite some time now it's you know it's around closing the the labor and skills gap we all know that a lot of uh, employees uh, working for manufacturing companies uh, will retire or decided to quit. And it's very difficult today for companies to recruit, manufacturing companies to recruit uh, new skills. And so they need to be guided in, in what they do in order to uh, be up to speed quicker and, uh, and making sure that they continue to deliver best practice that manufacturing companies delivered over the, you know, the past 30 years. And finally, as I said, you know, sustainability becomes a major priority. We see that uh, really leading the way in uh, in Europe. But when you look at Japan, same thing. Everybody, you know, is looking at how can they reduce the carbon footprint of their product? How can their product being really green when they are used uh, by the by their customers? And how also now they can be recycled, repaired, and those kind of things. So these are the four major drivers that you know usually uh, are you know uh, driving us to talk to customers because when they see the complexity of those four all together it becomes something that you know is tricky to uh, to solve right now you know when we look at uh, you know uh, what what exists companies did uh, did a few things already in uh, in in the way they attack you know those type of of problems so it's not new and a lot of companies started to develop uh, technology and, and solutions to address those problems. And when you look at, uh, you know, most of the solution we can see in a company are around, you know, designing digitally with, with the notion of digital twin, as we said. And, uh, and they are starting to model really the, the reality into digital model. Then then they can, they can run through what if scenarios in order to understand how to address one or many of those different um, topics that we discussed uh, before. And so you see a few of, of customers that did uh, implement, you know, those type of technology called digital twins. Some people talk about digital transformation. And of course, you need also to exchange those information between all the different um, employees and players in the company in order to make sure that everybody is sharing the same information to take the right decision at the right time related to the sustainability topic a lot of companies did also implement some tools like uh, lcas right so uh life cycle assessment where you know lcas is a way for the sustainability team and the chief sustainability officer in a company to really report where they are and so companies know usually where they stand based on their carbon emissions and the water consumption and a lot of you know those sustainability reports that help them to understand you know potentially where they stand now the next step for many companies is to say we know where we stand we want to understand how we can impact you know the the results we see in order to achieve the goal that we have in the next five years and this is where you know we come into play where we help company to identify where to start the journey in terms of you know reducing carbon footprint or making the the product lighter in order to make sure that the carbon footprint of the product from a usage perspective from a manufacturing perspective or even from a material perspective starts to impact you know the 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 the, the carbon footprint of the product in a sense that is going to reduce everything and help the company to be net zero, you know, when 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 they did put that in their plan. So we see that some of the of the of the the solutions has been put in place. People did put you know solutions around 
digital transformation, digital twin. They did put also some reporting solutions around sustainability. But according to our customers, it's not enough. It doesn't help them to identify where to start in order to really impact all those different, you know, and address all those different challenges all together. So this is where we come into play. What we say is a lot of things has been developed and, you know, you as a PTC customer uh, did implement CAT tool. So design engineers do design with the CAT tool. It's not new and, and you're doing that for, for a lot of time. And you are, you know, driving a lot of um, characteristics and, uh, and, uh, and uh, product details around, you know, what you design. And you usually do that with a twin, right? You, des you design a digital twin, which is not, you know, anything else than the replica of, you know, the final, you know, product that will be manufactured. But, you know, focusing just on the digital product with the twin is not enough because you, the companies do not incorporate, you know, the manufacturability of the product. How long does it take to, to manufacture this product or what would be the cost of manufacturing? How many steps are you going to have in terms of, you know, manufacturing these products? Can we do it differently? What type of factory could could we use in order to impact, you know, this carbon footprint of the product that we talked about, or the, minimize the product, the cost, or optimize the cost, or even reduce the time, you know, to manufacture the product? And this is where we come into play. We use those digital information that exists at the product level that is usually designed by the CAD tool and then pushed to the PNM tool for people to, you know, develop, for example, build of materials, to, you know, to build a product. But we add additional information, critical information around cost, around weight, around carbon footprint of the product, around manufacturability in order to now have what we call an end-to-end -end digital twin. So we complement what exists already, but now a product does have a lo lot more characteristics that you know, include, as I said, the cost or the, the process that it's going to take to build such a product, to manufacture such a product. And the customer has the possibility to start to question and to simulate additional processes that potentially could make this product lighter, could make this product cheaper, could make this product with a better carbon footprint. And all these kind of parameters will be embedded in the PLM system coming from the 3D CAD system. So that's what we do. As we say, we, we generate manufacturing insights that help company, as I said in the beginning, to unlock a lot of parameters that they didn't even think they could they could they could unlock right so uh in company that you know are implementing lean manufacturing methodologies or even continuous improvement methodologies usually both of them uh you would assume that you know everything has been tuned and optimized and everything and in fact no because because digital model can help companies to start to uh uh, plan for new ways of doing things that they didn't think about because they are always working on history. Here we're working on applying models to CAD objects that come from a product and really can tweak it in any type of direction, looking at what type of material we can use, how we could build that, does that minimize the number of processes uh, in the manufacturing process, what type of, of factor, what type of suppliers could we use, where are the suppliers, uh, located, all these kind of things can be simulated with the a priori solution on top of a PTC solution. So, so that's 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 what we do really, which is looking at and taking what exists already. That's why we say we 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 boost the digital uh, thread and digital transformation investment from manufacturing companies to add a lot of very critical data for a product now to have a kind of 360 degree view on you know what is this product about physical aspect of the product but also the cost the carbon footprint manufacturability time to market water consumption electricity consumption all those kind of parameters so if we're back to what companies are trying to address uh, when we look at at the beginning of this presentation then we help companies to do 
I would say a lot of things, uh, but in a, in the right order, right? So usually when we come in 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 the company and we start to work with a customer, the first thing they look at is are there any additional ways to optimize the the cost of a product, right? And this is probably why we're well known in this market. We started with cost long time ago, with those models, helping companies to understand if they could manufacture. Uh, better if they could use different type of materials to minimize the cost, sometimes the weights as well. You know, in in uh, uh, um, aerospace and defense, that's a big topic. And uh, and then you know, help them to really identify some some new ways of you know reducing the cost of a product. And so we have a, a way to really uh, analyze that, and and we find you know every time a huge amount of cost optimization for for many manufacturers and that's why we're we're you know definitely well known so it helps company to be more competitive in a very competitive market and and making sure that they continue to have the right cost for the right customers now as soon as we do that we all know that you know 80% potentially of a cost or any parameter of a product is really you know defined at the early stage of the design of the product right and so this is where we play a big a big role as well we work with the sourcing team in a company we work with the procurement team in the company on this cost breakdown and cost you know optimization where we help sourcing team to source or manufacture the product in the right country based on their new um, regulations or their new rules right so uh, for example we talked about the fact that there were a disruption around, you know, delivering product during COVID. A lot of companies use our solutions to understand where they could manufacture their product now, knowing that some country could not deliver. So they wanted to start to manufacture the product or some of their part that were missing, not too far where they were assembling the product. So at that time, they were not stuck in a situation where they could not deliver the product. So that's a supply chain. That's a procurement way of doing things. Now, from an engineering perspective, we work also with engineering teams and we are, you know, real time helping them to understand if the design they are you know, starting to propose is really uh, well aligned with a cost target or a carbon footprint target or even a manufacturability target. And we don't do we don't go as detailed as we would do it with a procurement and sourcing team, but we help them to understand if they are good or bad, right? And so should they reconsider to use a different type of materials, to dip a, a different type of design, not too far from where they are, but that would significantly optimize, right? Their uh, their their the, the the cost or the the carbon footprint and even the manufacturability of the product. Based on that, we help them to you know interactively look at their designs with a kind of loop they start to have an assessment good bad or good okay bad and then based on that we help them to identify where they can make a big impact on their design and as such they can you know we tweak that in the CAD send that back to the model look at different type of processes they could use pro material they could use and see at the end how they can really significantly impact you know this in terms of uh, cost or uh, car uh, carbon footprint Manufacturing feasibility is a big thing as well. We do uh, making sure that, as I said, we reduce the the risk of supply chain, and you know, even further than that, we help companies to really um, start to consider another way of working with our suppliers. Right. So some of our customers are now uh, having a kind of automatic process. They call that zero RFQ that help their you know negotiating with their with their uh, suppliers and manufacturing companies on specific target they have. And then based on that, you know, every time they have to manufacture, they know that the quantity will be delivered. They know they will deliver at the right price with the right quality. And now, very importantly, with the right level of carbon footprint, because you know that in the sustainability target, now there is something called scope three and scope three integrate also the carbon footprint that it takes for a supplier to do the product. So they need to report on that as a manufacturing company. You need to report on all the different elements that you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna manufacture through your many, many, you know, a lot of numbers of suppliers. And at the end, you need to consolidate this number into your product. And of course, we help them also to uh, start to identify where to have a major impact on products. So you know, if a company is in manufacturing something like 100 products, 
which one do you start to tackle, right? Which one is going to drive maybe a, a significant, like a 50% impact on your carbon footprint target? And, and we help them to identify that through analysis, what we call outliers analysis. And automatically, you know where to focus your efforts in order to really have an impact, which, you know, any, any kind of ACA reporting tool would not do. They would just tell you where you are. So when you look at that, that's, you know, that's how, you know, we came to a, a partnership with Aprior. We said, look, you know, and Apri uh, with a PTC, sorry. And we said, look, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting to, uh, to see what PTC does because, you know, they have a very, you know, well-known 3D CAD design tool that helps, you know, many designers to, to design the best product, you know, in the world. They also have a PLM system that is, you know, taking all those information to make sure that then the all those information related to the product can be distributed to the right people at the right time in information to manufacture this product or even to main to serve this product, right? Or even now to recycle this product, right? So we have build of materials, different type of build of materials. However, as we said, those information were not complete. We're missing, you know, some critical elements that can help to uh, manufacturing companies to align the different function together. The cost of the product was not in. The carbon footprint of the product was not in. The manufacturability or the weight of the product sometimes is not in. Now, working with, with PTC, we take this really design from Creo. We look at it. We analyze it, we complement it with all those different information around cost, sustainability, manufacturability, and many others. We have, you know, thousands of, of, of criteria that we can add to the PLM system. And then everybody can benefit in the company of those information and, and can work with it. So now, if everybody's using the same what we call digital thread with PTC, which is the way to share this information across all the different departments involved in in the manufacturing process from designing it to even serving it in the meantime in the between the manufacturing it and then recycling it then we start to have a, a, a complete loop around you know how how people can work on and and impact the strategy of the company so that's that's why we have this partnership together we complement each other we extract information coming from the cad out of the plm we simulate, you know, new ways of doing things that would send be, that would be sent back to the to the design engineers. At the same time, the procurement people or the sourcing people working with the suppliers can start also to work to work with those suppliers to you know identify you know how they're going to make it. And sometimes the suppliers give great feedback to those manufacturers on how to optimize those products. Also, usually from a cost perspective as well as a carbon footprint perspective. The plant manager knows now, you know, that how how we can optimize that and, and start to work on it based on that. So everybody has the same information and the full set of information to make a better job and, and help this company they're working for to be more profitable on one side, but also more sustainability, more sustainable on the other side. So I think that's it for me. Maybe I've been a little bit too long. I don't know, Tobion, but um, I'm going to stop here because I'm. I would like to make sure that if there is any question, I, I, I have the time to answer those questions. Well, thanks a lot, Philippe, for sharing all your interesting insights about them I and how to utilize the digital twin and digital thread. So as you said, I'm mean, now over to you in the audience. If you have any questions, please I mean, raise your hand or put your questions in the chat and we will pick them up there. I think we had one question here earlier. And that was a little bit regarding, I mean, your title, I mean, for the session, you mentioned, I mean, transformation. Could you tell us a little bit more about transformation, the part here? Yeah, that, that's a great question, uh, Tobion. Um, most of the manufacturing companies, as like I said, over the last 30 years did put a lot of methodology and there is nothing to do with technology here. It's really methodology, deep dive methodology coming from Six Sigma or, you know, any, any other manufacturing uh, methodology like in lean manufacturing continuous improvement that did helps to what i would call optimize right so you always try to reduce cost uh in your organization at every level you try to reduce um you know or optimize your processes but today we come to a, a, an end of this this type of process you cannot optimize continuously 
And it's probably right now, based on the complexity of what we see between inflation, geopolitical, you know, aspect and and disruption, um, carbon, you know, the sustainability target that many companies do have, plus this labor shortage that they see, it's, it becomes so complex that optimization will not be enough to move to the next step. And so that's what we call business transformation, moving from business optimization to business transformation that helps company not only to continue to be better at what they do, so they continue to optimize, but they need to transform to optimize. And in order to transform to optimize, the only way to do it today is to use, to use new ways of doing things in order to go to that step. And this new way of doing things is to leverage all this digital era that we see and we're in between you know, modeling, factory models, uh, 3D models, and also digital factory and you know labor uh, models, all those kind of things that we bring together to help them transform and continue their business, continue to exist in a world that you know it's different, it, it's difficult uh, you know to tackle based on the, the multiple challenges. So I, I don't know if it answers the question, but that's the way we see transformation. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Philippe. Uh, we had another question here as well, and that relates a little bit I mean, to, uh, I mean, each industry, they are facing different set of sustainability cha challenges. And what are the biggest sort of I mean, sustainability challenges for the manufacturers? The, uh, that, that's, a, that's an excellent question as well. So the, um, there are, you know, a lot of challenges and they are raising as we go. Um, so, um, you know, the, the first one is that you know, a lot of com a lot of countries will have and, and continue to develop their own reporting uh, regulation. Right. So you're going to need to comply with specific criteria that may be different from one country to another. There are a set of rules in the European Commission. And so uh, you need to comply with that. But some countries do have also specific rules on top of those ones that company need to respect. So it means that you're going to need to comply with with a lot of uh, factors uh, in sustainability that you know will will need you to really understand and uh, and have the trustability of what you do. And that's what we provide between a priori and PTC. A priori has a lot of way to help you to to trace you know what the decision you take you know that you you know report on that and justify your reporting so the compliance and the regulation continue to grow on the regulation side there is a um, a, a new uh, a, a new way also of, uh, of 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 doing things and you know i know that the european commission for example um did put a new rule, and I think it's in place now since October. It's called CBAM. It's Carbon uh, Border Adjustment uh, Mechanism. And uh, what it does is that companies will need also to uh, start to uh, report the carbon you know, uh, impact on the material they import in the country. And if they import product, they will need to report that, to report on that. And if those products do not with those parts that you know are assembled uh, to make the product do not uh, respect a specific carbon threshold, then they're going to tax those those mm. products or those parts that would be imported in the country. That's another thing that those tax things will come into play into October 26, which is you know in three years from now. But now the reporting is something that is mandatory now for the for the company so the european commissions can can you know look at that so cbam you know carbon uh, border um, adjustment mechanism is a big thing and you know if you go to our blog or if you go to our website you will find a lot of articles on that and how you can you know as a manufacturing company uh, start to uh, to work on that the third component that we see in this is the the consumer by itself. Um, we see a a, 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 change, a major change in in behavior around those customers where the youngest generation, right, is looking at greener product, and so uh, you know they are ready to pay a little bit more, not you know sometimes a, a significant amount, but a, a little bit more to have a greener product, a product that can be repaired, a product that can be uh, recycled, a product that has a, a carbon footprint, you know, a, a lower uh, carbon footprint than, than another one. 
And this consumer behavior starts to be perceived by the manufacturing companies as a, as a competitive differentiator, if you wish. You start to be competitive if you are a greener product. And we see that raising significantly in Europe, but also in North America and Japan. And last but not least, we start to have companies starts to have financial impacts because we see more and more customers talking about bounds that are linked to carbon footprint emission as well. So they are, you know, having money. They they try to contract money from banking or specific organization that you know would have a specific interest rate based on their carbon, you know, target. And if they do not respect that this carbon target, then the rate will go up. It's completely defined, you know, in uh, before they contract this loan and 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 take the money. But they then after after contracting that the interest rate can be very interesting if you if you respect your target, but can be super impacting financially if you don't, forcing company to do something about it. Thank you, Philippe. We have uh, one last question here, and that is from Preben. How do you handle the production CO2 in windshield? So that's that's a great great question as well. Thank you very much. So um, we have a we have an interface with windshield, so we're able to uh, extract data from windshield uh, and uh, and take you know everything we need in order to run the model. And so based on this model, we can run what if scenarios based on you know the um, build of materials that you would like to uh, to to consider specific materials, specific processes, etc. And then, you know, when we analyze that, we send that back to Windshield and write, you know, additional information in Windshield so everybody can uh, can can benefit from those information. So it's really an interface that we develop and is available for customers so that we can extract data from Windshield and then uh, import data in Windshield. Thanks. I have uh, actually one uh, additional question here as well from Rick. Uh, are there any demos or videos uh available where the interaction between PLM and uh, a priori solutions. Yes, are. there is there is a demo. I don't know if we did put that on our website. Uh, I can definitely follow up on that and send uh, yeah. the link. We did build a demo. We were part of uh, uh, PTC Liveworks this year where, you know, a lot of the PTC customers were very interested by this demo. So uh, we can send this uh, a link to the demo or put the demo on the website and people will look at it. Fantastic. Time is unfortunately running out, uh, so thanks a lot uh, everyone for joining and of course a special thanks to you Philip for sharing a lot of I mean, interesting information here. So with that I hope to see you back over the next week at the PTC talks where we have a, a session around can digital twins and augmented reality unlock financial benefits in facilities uh, by the visionaries trip seven. So stay tuned for that. And I wish you a fantastic weekend, everyone. Thank you very much. And I did put my details. So if everybody has any questions or want to know more about what we do with PTC together, you can send me an email at padam at apriori.com and I will make sure that uh, I, I answer this question or will put you in contact with uh, with some of our experts that would be way better than me in terms of you know ask, uh, answering your question. But thank you very much for your for your time today. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye-bye.